And um, have you been through the whole online course? Yeah, I think I've got maybe I'm I'm into post pregnancy um material now. So Good. yeah, yeah. On you, whereabouts are you? Um, I'm I'm still pretty early. I'm 16 weeks tomorrow. And are you in Melbourne or Sydney? I'm in Sydney. Yeah, so I'm um I'm a student of Lamore's. Oh, um, nice. so she she actually put me in touch with your course. Um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so oh, grateful. Wow. So grateful for that knowledge at that time. It was really, really helpful. It's awesome that you're doing it early and it's yeah. so beautiful in connection with uh, Vedic meditation practice. Yeah. yeah. You know, you just open those pathways in the brain with that meditation and then those, that visualisation work, it helps to rewire and, yeah, you understand yeah. the rest. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I feel a bit sad in a way that you, you're not allowed to meditate while you're in labour. <laughs> Have to learn other things. <laughs> well, what happens, it's even better than a meditation. Yeah, yeah. It's nice for everyone to know. So it's the same hormones of meditation, that beta endorphins and that oxytocin and that suppression of adrenaline and cortisol and so on. But the beta endorphins are like, hundreds of times stronger yeah <laughs> so that's where like the transcendence happens mm -hmm. and that's where you get that poetry from people about like you know to have my baby I felt like I journeyed off into the stars and and came back you know like that's the transcendence yeah yeah so you're up for something way better than a 20 minute meditation all right. <laughs> Maybe like a weekend retreat or something. Yeah, there's way more. It's a way oh, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be good. It's going to be yeah. great. Yeah, so it's good. So, surrender. Just surrender. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Um, who else would like to share? Anyone else? Hey, Sarah. Welcome back. Sarah's in Melbourne. How are everybody's week? Has anyone got anything they want to share or anything they want support with? Oh. No? Who is that? I'm trying to meet everyone. Maybe if I can share. Yeah. Hey, it's Katharina. Um, well, I found out last week that my baby is in the breach. <laughs> so <laughs> I was freaking out a little bit at the beginning, but I'm not freaking out now so much. I'm going to see a doctor uh visits um i mean i saw him today and he's gonna try to spin the baby tomorrow so yeah so it's a bit something very unexpected um in saturday on saturday i'm 38 all uh, right so they're <laughs> undiagnosed or they think the baby just turned breech um we don't really know. To be honest, I actually think that she's been just very comfortable in that position because I was so certain that she is um, head down because I can feel the hiccup down a lot, a lot. And I'm like, oh, she's, you know, like since 31st week, it's like, oh, she's down. That's perfect. And then boom, 37 weeks can. No, she is not. This is her head. That's not her bump. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> what now? Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm trying to do the <clears throat> the spinning babies and um, it's it's a bit challenging, to be honest. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm trying to get there and be positive as much as I can, trying to encourage her to move around. Yeah, that's right. And today's all yeah. about connecting with your baby. Yeah. Yeah, so on top of the class today, keep chipping away because what you can do before an ECV, an external cephalic version that the OB will do, what you can do is just really soften your belly. Like mm -hmm. you just want it like so soft so that she's yeah. got so much room to like move mm -hmm. in there, right? And that means doing like big expansive breaths, really pushing out any fascial adhesions that might be there in the fascial okay. belly. We all have to do that but you knew it especially. 
And then the hanging upside down off the sofa is really important. Did you do she births? Have you done she births? I haven't done she births, uh, um, but um, I've done with Liz. Um, she is a private midwife. Um, I think one of your doulas is um, in touch with you, um, Katrina. Oh, Katrina, yeah. So yeah. you can do rebozo and the spinning babies and then look up Miles circuit and do that sideline release tonight. M-I-L-E-S circuit. Miles. Okay. Miles circuit. All right. Okay. And do the sideline release in bed tonight and do the curb walking. Just get everything as open as you can. And if you can book into a chiropractor tomorrow morning, even better, and get a Webster technique done. And then okay. you can get chiropractic names off the SheBirth's website, and then your body is going to be way more prepared and okay. able to manage. Just It's about making the space. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Talk to them. Actually, talk on that to them. note, Nadine, I, um, I did that uh, mild circuit um, with the visualization the other day and the next day I felt like my ligament stretching and then I just felt like the baby drop <laughs> it was quite full on and it, yeah she stayed in that position for 48 hours I was just peeing the whole time and I was like no this is too early I'm not I'm only 32 weeks I'm not ready but um, she's moved again but yeah, but isn't it good to know that you can use those tools yeah. to make more space? So the sideline release on the bed is like this crazy position. It looks like you're sort of like lying in. You've got one knee up as high as you can go, turning into the bed with lots of pillows. It's like you're trying to make the belly a hammock into the bed as much as possible. And um, it's just such a great one for making space. So then you know she's not engaged at 30 or 39 weeks. You know, you can use those tools the body responds and it will open that's great now yeah it's surprised me <laughs> yes it's yeah good. good thanks for sharing so anybody else want to share anything anything coming up any questions from this week good all right well today we're going to cover we're going to go over like we have a talk this morning or a workshop on divine feminine which is nice a bit like a class last week but it was nice lots of journaling and meditation it was good but we're going to talk about connecting with your baby because the cool thing is in all spiritual traditions um in buddhism vedas in you know natural based earth-based spiritual traditions around the globe um even though the woman calls the baby in the baby has chosen to be with you, right? And they've chosen to come in, however you've conceived, right? It doesn't make a difference. So they've chosen, and that means you and I have all chosen our parents because they're the perfect people to teach us the lessons that we need for this lifetime, which is a really interesting thing to think about. And that's a really interesting thing to start to heal is the relationship with parents as you become a parent and start to take responsibility for the fact that your soul chose them. So then you'll be in a much more whole place as you start to acknowledge the fact that you are the perfect mother for this child. And the journey of parenting begins, you know, some might say with conception or some might say, you know, when the baby's conscious enough of like senses, you know, starting around the 16 to 19 weeks to hear things and to feel the skin, and to respond, actually, they respond to you touching your belly and so on. And they do, the soul really implants around that time. Before that time, it's very easy for them to go. So around the sort of 108th day, they really settle in and in bed and in body. But you know, the soul also was seeded and planted and the birthing and the journey was seeded and planted so far ago, so far back, that there really should be a, a real sense of relaxation and trust in that divine orchestration. And so on a practical level, you know, connecting with your baby, I think is a beautiful thing for you to do. And we'll do some practices in the yoga today, but I think it's a beautiful thing for your partners to also do. I think it's really important that we invite them in to the pregnancy 
and to the birth, and they're going to be more involved in the birth and the early postpartum, the more we include them in pregnancy. And the really the cutest, funnest way to do that, that I know of, well, of course, is reading little books to them. It's so cute just to read them stories and having like special bedtime music. But before that, for your partner to acknowledge they have a connection with your baby, you can play the tapping game. Has anyone ever played the tapping game? Okay, cool. Okay, so we've got like baby and we know they're awake. And we know like hands are some, somewhere around here and feet and so on, maybe a bit higher or depends where they are. And so when you feel they're awake and they're moving a little bit, just tell your partner to come over and feel that. And what you can do is just go tap and they tend to just go tap back and you go tap, tap, and they tend to go tap, tap back. You can, you know, go tap, tap, tap. And then they're like, oh, you guys are boring. Stop playing the tapping game. But, you know, so you start to create this communication between the bodies um, through the body. And so in a sense, you're already a mum because you're growing this being, your body's already surrendered to giving to making them preference that's on a physical cellular level what's happening the baby needs anything you give it to them you deplete yourself that has begun <laughs> and so we have to take care of ourselves because you are that temple from where everything sort of moves from and so we can do some meditations around that and we can really drop in and trust your intuition in terms of dialoguing with your baby asking them how they are, explaining to them how you are, talking to them about the birth, talking with them through the birth is a very powerful thing to do. But beginning that dialogue now is a great way yeah, to start. So let's start, let's get on the mat. I've got my mat, bricks, blanket, That song. song of the week. Okay, so we are going to start as we always do in Sukta Baddha Konasana, feet together, knees apart, if that's comfortable. Lying back, one brick is low, the other brick under your head is high. And find a place where you can just tuck your tail under, there's no compression in your lower back. Yeah. And if your groin gets sore, yeah, or you've got a posterior baby or a sore lower back, you might want to start in a child's pose instead of this, right? Your arms can come up overhead, you can hold your elbows, or you can just reach your arms up to the side. Just take some nice big breaths. Big inhales, expanding your belly. Yeah. And allow your body just to move with the breath and see if you can just breathe a little bigger into the belly to stretch out the belly like you're blowing up a balloon in the abdomen. And then allow that balloon just to deflate and soften. And then spend a little time with your awareness in the heart center, in the heart space, that whole chest and lungs, breasts area, your diaphragm. See if you can just expand a little bit more and maybe get to the top of your inhale and just hold your breath for a few counts and really stretch out that space. Hold that pran in the body. And when you're ready, a long, slow, rising exhale and just let that pran move all the way out through to the fingers and the toes. If that felt good, inhale. Big breath in, hold at the top for a few counts, long exhale.
One more if it feels comfy. So that third exhale, let awareness come back into the face. Let the whole face soften even more. You might think it's relaxed, but it can relax even more. Soften the eyelids and all the muscles behind the eyes. And soften your jaw and your back teeth. The joints just right near your ears and behind your ears. Tongue might still just gently touch the top palate of the mouth. It's kind of sealing our energy. The jaw can still be relaxed. Even a sense of the nasal passages softening and expanding. The body always responds to our attention. It always responds to what we imagine. The scalp expand training bones, and perhaps just allow your awareness to rest in the third eye space, just behind the eyebrow center. The center for insight, clarity, knowing, inner knowing, inner seeing. Imagine a little light in that third eye space and shine out into the world, your own little lighthouse on the third eye. And now just get that lighthouse light and just drop it down into your body, right down into your heart and right down into the womb. So it's like a warm glowing light now on your baby in your space. Warm golden glow, it's not a bright light, it's just a nice warm golden glow, just kind of sending them your awareness. Consciously connecting with the third eye. And that love from the heart also flowing down into the womb space. Let's just send your baby a little message, a little message of hello. Or sorry, I haven't been in contact much lately. I'm so busy. Or it might be message of gratitude, gratitude for all the beautiful changes that they're bringing and enrichment into your life thus far. And their consciousness certainly changes ours, changes our personalities as well as our bodies the way that we love, the way we know love, and the way that we think and believe, the way we understand the divine, all through simply carrying this being. Take a few deep breaths, belly, heart, third eye, all awakened with the breath, the baby. Still lying now on the floor, you can just wiggle your fingers and your toes. The knees are wide. Just really gently squeeze them back together. Use your hands if you need. And if you're on your back body, just gently roll maybe to your right side if you've got space there. And then just draw the body upright. Big toes together, knees apart. Come up, one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. Really lengthening the spine, dropping back into the pelvis. Just take a big breath in. Exhale, surrender forwards and relax down.
just melting the heart down towards the earth. Any anxiety, any fear, just let it flow down into the earth. And we lift our head and just walk our hands in with the hips and just bring ourselves around back onto the sit bones, come into Sukhasan. Nice little opening for the body, feet are under the knees. Bring your fingertips forward. So you could be sitting on a blanket. You start to tilt the body forward, so keep lifting the chest and just walk forward. Walk, walk, walk. And some of you will go to palms, some of you go to forearms. You might just be up like this, your belly's still in the way and you're up high, then you definitely need to just sit on something on your butt. Just to make more comfort, more room. Yeah. If you've got the room and it feels good, have a little play. Just sway the body side to side or walk the arms. Notice how you're breathing. When you're ready, just gently walk the hands in, lift the body upright. Remember which leg's in front, lean back, give the legs a little shake, roll the ankles, and just swap the feet over the other way. And pull back your toes to dorsiflex. I mean, some of you who are really open, you could just bring one foot even up onto the other and then go even deeper into the hips. Go straight into the other side, just waking up. The glutes, the hammies, getting there into the root of them, and also making lots of space, broadening the sacrum so it doesn't feel so compressed. Relax your belly, relax your shoulders. Close the eyes, just feel your breath. Just take a big breath in through your nose and then out through the mouth, clearing. Letting go of everything all day, everything that's happened before. Bring your hands back behind you, fingers point ahead and open your feet. Okay, so you take a little reverse tabletop if you can, just lift your hips up, maybe roll the hips back. One more breath with the chest. And then gently release down. Sit for a moment. Body a little bit more open. Bring your hands into prayer. Lift up through your radiant heart. Drop that intention to connect on a deeper level, soul level, in a way that's meaningful now with your baby. Down into the heart. One on to begin our practice. A deep breath in. Oh. Bowing the head, touch the fingers to the third eye. Get it to your lips. Through your heart and then down to your babies. Gently release, move all our props off to the side. And we'll just come around onto all fours. This is like a classic kind of beginning. I've got this way. You can see. And just take some little cat cows. And you're inhaling as the belly goes down and shoulders pull back. Maybe even bend your elbows if that's okay on those floating ribs area. Just be mindful. 
a little wiggle even in some of the poses and then exhale, you can really curl it up, start to wag the head, the tail, maybe even give it a little shake. A few more breaths. You can kind of roll it around in a circle a couple of times, a little drunken pat if you feel like. Opening it up bigger and wider, knees wide, toes together, bottom back, hands out in front. Reach and lengthen your whole torso, just kind of like stretch it out even more. And then just let your pelvis come forward, soften your belly. Tuck the tail, stretch, even pull on those fingers and pull the hips away. You want to make it stronger. Now, if it's okay on your pubic bone, your lower back, you've got those little side round movements. If it's sore on your lower back, on your pubic bone, go narrow with the knees and just make it a small movement. Maybe even just come to the forearms. I like doing it to my forearms anyway. Getting off the wrists. Roll, sway, let the head hang. Maybe even to rock the hips. Whatever feels good. Couple more breaths. Gently draw yourself back into child's pose. Put the hands under your head, under that third eye space. If that's still too low, put a brick under there or a bolster under your chest. You really feel the weight of the belly and the heart just soften now, all that fashion, just relax in the front body, that beautiful widening of the sacrum. Beautiful stretching across the pelvic floor between your sit bones. And even stretching from pubic bone up to tailbone and back down. Beautiful diamond of bones, all the web of fascia like a hammock. Yeah, front to back, attached to the sides, all of that just opening and stretching. And see if you can take a nice big breath into your pelvis. You breathe in, feel like you're blowing up a balloon in your pelvis, in the pelvic floor, as well as your belly and back. A couple of big conscious breaths. You might breathe out through the mouth for that last little one. And then just gently lift yourself back up. Yeah, we're just gonna keep the pelvic floor relaxed today. Yeah, let's tap those toes under and sit back onto the heels. You got a little toe crunch. While we sit here, if it gets too intense, lift up. You can try and lean back a little bit more. Can you try and let more weight just drop down? Just kind of get a bit of distraction. So you get the hands and you just like roll the wrists, like you're pouring energy into the heart. And then just pour energy up and out as you roll the wrists. Nice little distraction. And gently come up, sit back down the opposite way on the feet, the ankles, and take a radial nerve stretch. So arms come out and you're gonna go thumb and index finger together. And then fold the thumb in, roll your wrists. Oh, my, legs, my arms are so out. Oh my God, a burst. Don't do that. That's just me trying to straighten my arms. I've got like a bursitis from throwing the bloody dog ball. Anyway, so you can pull your index finger inside the thumb, roll the wrist to the screen or the front of your mat, stretch out your other fingers, and you should start to feel like nerve stretching through the fingers and the wrists. Keep the shoulders down, keep pulling your thumbs in, push your wrists away, stretch your other fingers, twist your arms, keep holding, keep breathing, make your arms longer, pull your thumbs closer, keep breathing. Avoid any carpal tunnel. 
radial nerve pinching around the neck. Okay, and then gently release and just shake it out. Boom. Okay, come up onto your knees. I always feel very rushed teaching Zoom yoga. It's really hard to not feel the energy of the room. Really hard. Okay, toes pointing out. So if you feel like I'm going too fast, <laughs> just feel like you get distracted on screens. We just gotta like keep it moving, you know? All right, foot is grounded. The bottom's gonna wanna go back. So just lift up a little taller and like push down and get a nice bounce the ball down, lift it up. Inhale, reach your arms up and then arch over towards your leg. And then let your hand come down, palm faces up or more support with hand on your hip. And you can reach a little more. You can look under your arm. Try and breathe into that psoas, into the obliques and the side there. That's having a nice big stretch. And just push down into your foot and your knee a little bit more. Work the core as you stretch it. Put the breath up into that diaphragm. Gently release, bring your arms out to the sides like a little teapot. See if you can just hold it. Go to the other side. <laughs> That's it. Inhale up. Exhale over. Oh, this side's so much deeper. So palm up is stronger. And hip, more support. Looking down is easier. Looking up makes that rotation happen a bit more. So just do what you need. See if you can bite the breath in. And you should be kind of birthy about yoga. You know, like if you were like feeling a bit of stiffness in your body during birth, like literally I'd come as your door and I'd just like massage it out. And you'll find like you can just do that to yourself. You just be like, oh yeah, just touch the fascia while I'm in the stretch and I breathe. Wow, I've just like gone an extra two centimeters, you know? Just give it a try. Just like massage any sore spots with your other hand or just see. It's like be your own doula on the yoga mat. Put it arms up, leg down, clasp the fingers behind your back. Take a big chest stretch. My chest likes to pop out because I've got a big abdominal separation, but I'll just pull those ribs in, tuck the chin down, drop the shoulders. Lift the knuckles. Really focus on bringing the breath into the top of your chest, around the sternum and the thymus gland for your immune system. Feel like you're just lifting your sternum up towards your chin. Two more breaths. Little Roselle is just sitting there at my window having a beautiful snack. Gently release, roll it out. So drop your hands down, tap your toes, send your bottom up and just have like a little kind of sway. So you might just like hang, you might need your elbows and your legs. You might just be a little bit more forward bendy, whatever is okay for your body. So good to invert the body, even when you're pregnant. And then drop the bottom, bend your knees, roll up through your spine. Nice, and just come on up to standing. And I've got a Not quite, all right. Let's take some Kundalini rolls to warm up the back a little bit more. Our toes kind of turn out, just kind of rock a little bit. Just feel the feet, try and balance the weight out. And then your body will just come into center a little bit more. And even like just lift the heels of the feet, just tap them in the floor. And this like sends information up through the pelvis. So there's all these proprioceptors and into the brain. And then just rock a little bit and you'll feel more grounded, more aware of your body in space, more centered. Yeah, bring the hands into prayer, close the eyes and heart. Do your practice. Remembering that we're doing it for ourselves, but also for our baby, and they're sharing our chemistry. Okay, so we can encourage that bliss chemistry in our bodies with that practice, and then 
give that to our babies. Do them in like this. Now drop the arms down beside you. Take a big breath in. Sweep the arms up. Exhale as you slow down. Fingers to the floor, your heels are up. Inhale. Hi! I'm just teaching yoga online. Exhale, roll your bottom up. Oh, thank you, Eric. I will. I'd love to take a big breath in. reaching to the divine and then just drawing that down back into your heart. Good. It's like the first time someone's walked into my garden yelling out hello. Hilarious. Stand at the front and back. Here we go. Let's go sun salutes. <laughs> Toes are wide again and you can have your bricks. Have them handy. Back to the heart. Connection. Inhale wide. Exhale, bend knees, come down, fingers to the floor. Lean to your left, step your right leg back onto the edge of the mat. And then take your feet further apart and maybe just rock a little bit more. So you can have hands on bricks, any height you need to make it easier. Especially if you've got short arms like me. You can go to the knee. You could just do a soul sunge if your pubic bone saw your back sore. Yeah. You can do all sorts of things, you know. You can kind of even play with it. You can like, some people like to just play and like rock and roll it around. Whatever the belly still allows you to do, right? Respecting our babies and the space they need. And now gently take it back into down the dog. Here we go. And walk on the spot, whatever you've got to do for the backs of your legs, your calf muscles. Get inside. In. In. Into bed. Reach those heels down. Into bed. Sit. One more breath. Good. And then to come out, you're going to look ahead. Lean into your left hand a little bit more. So you've got more room just to sweep that right leg up. And then rock the left foot up too. And then you're in a kind of open or katasan, yeah? You can take a yoni mudra, thumb and index finger together. The other fingers are just kind of bound, interlaced. And remember you're breathing for two. You're breathing for you and your baby, practicing for birth for both of you. You want to take those big, long breaths. You want to add movement. Soften your face and your shoulders as much as you were when you were lying back in Baddha Kanasa. Get everything soft in your face. And then drop your arms, deep breath in and wide, reach up. Exhale, come down. Keep the breath in and out through the nose and try and just let the breath soften and the heart rate soften. 
Feel your feet in the earth. Touching the earth, but not far from the earth. And the earth has an electromagnetic field and you're held in that. And planting roots down into the earth. Left leg easy, when you're ready, inhale wide. Exhale, slow down. Lean right, left leg back. Adjust, do whatever you're gonna do. Take whatever variations work. When you're ready, you've got downward dog, and you can play with your down dog. Yeah, if you want to, you can feel strong. You can take a few little planks to just kind of glide forwards, lock in, lift up, roll it up, roll your head, bend your knees, reach up, forwards, back. The back doesn't have to be static. Yeah, one thing that the feminine likes is movement. <laughs> Lots of movement. We love moving in birth. Rock the tail side to side. <coughs> Good. And to come out, lean into your right hand. Left leg up. Sweep it forwards. Then the other side. Contraction practice. Shoulders from your ears, heart stays open. Deep wide belly breaths. We're just really using the thighs as a metaphor for intense sensation. You know, it's not like a pose you're going to be forced to hold in labor, right? Hello, you're in pain a lot of time. When I'm using your legs, they get sore sometimes. Movement is a nice distraction, but stay down. I'm really there. Beautiful. Drop your arm. Well done. Big breath in. That was a long contraction. One contraction to have, hands come down, one hand to your heart, one hand to your baby. It's not really just your belly anymore, it's your hand to your baby. And your toes in, and just pause together, settle together. Knees, have your feet wider than your hips, hands to your tummy or your hips, and just roll the ball of your pelvis around. Sways, you know, this is great for posterior, just doing this anterior tuck, like this big tuck under if your baby's lying posterior. But it's great for all of us just to kind of roll around. Sway it out, circle it out. And, and you should practice doing this, you know, anywhere in the house, like get to the kitchen bench. I do it all the time. I'm just like, yeah, just go relax my bum. So important to just relax your fanny, your bum, your thighs, your hips. It's so much tension collects there, so much weight, so much change, so much stretching. Just like bringing that movement gets that oxygenation, that circulation, and just lets everything open and breathe again. Then bring the breath down here. Yeah, and then just give your belly a little rub. I always think that like when we rock our pelvises, and I do it like automatically when I see a woman with a baby, this is like you holding your baby. 
you know, because you'll be going, it's heat. <laughs> you know, you'll just be like swaying, rocking, you know, tapping like a heartbeat. Like you want to, when you pat your baby, you want to just like tap for a heartbeat. You know, you can do a bit of gugum, gugum. You can do that for just one, one, the rhythm of the heart. That's what they know. But it's been studied, God love the researchers, that women who stroke their bellies <laughs> from 16 weeks on tend to have children with greater self-esteem. Isn't that interesting? Because this is all about your soothing and your regulating. You're connecting with them. And so they're knowing that they're loved, they're supported, they're safe. They're starting to form an attachment. And that attachment is what builds self-esteem, that worthiness. Yeah. You're just like you're already meeting their needs with your little movements of your body. If you're stroking them, you tell me, which is a good thing. Remember that every time you touch your belly. You don't let nasty people touch your belly. They know, right? Only nice juju, only good energy. <laughs> no randos. All right. Let's come to standing the front of your mat. And you've got your feet about hip width apart and your hands on your hip. And you're going to step back with your right leg into warrior one. The toes are pointing up at an angle. The front knee's bending. You might need to like move that foot wider for your tummy. Feel what's comfortable. Both feet, equal weight. Arms sweeping up, shoulders down. Lift your chest so it really opens the chest and start to lift your ribs up away from the hips. Take some nice big breaths into the bottom of the lungs. While you keep your shoulders soft. If your hands are a little wider, your shoulders can relax. Or if the hands are in front of your nose, chest area, rather than over the head, then they'll be able to relax. Good. Sweep your arms around. Clasp your fingers. Now walk your foot, that front foot, off to the side a little bit. See if you've got the room just to take I can't remember what it's called, humble warrior. So fold forwards, so you might just come through like a little aeroplane, opening the chest, work the legs a little stronger, get really grounded for you and your baby, and then gently release. The hands to hips, heel toe your back foot, and then just bounce off. Just do that little heel toe just to protect your sacrum, a little relaxing in it, yeah? Step back when you're ready, other side. Yeah, reach up, lift the heart, lift your ribs, drop the tail, ground the feet, feel your breath. Clasp things behind your back and get your fingers in that unfamiliar way. So it'll feel kind of weird. Walk that front foot wider. Some of you will be able to take a full humble warrior. Some of you work a little airplane, just strengthening that front leg and just pulling the arms back and opening the chest. Whatever you can do is good. Perfect. Strong pose, well done. Come up, hands to hips, heel toe back of the foot. Step forward when you're ready, shake it out. Good, feet together. Finding balance. So whichever balance works for you, your chasana, your tree, your like pata, if you want to do that, maybe do a little Dancing shiva if you want. Work that quad stretch. Just keep tucking your tail under. Doesn't hurt your lower back. Whichever one works for you. And just hold for five breaths. Gently come out of the 
pose, whichever one is good. Just release, feel, comparing the two sides is always a great way to learn. Learn what you're bringing into body and into the consciousness. Consciousness exists in the body. It's not just like thoughts. The sensations is separate, but your sensations are a reflection of consciousness in both ways. It's flowing. Balance to the body brings balance to the mind. Gently just release out of that pose in one way, one time. Let's come down onto the floor. If you're sitting with your legs crossed, you might want to sit onto a folded blanket and do a little bit of breath work, as well as some little twists and stretches. Okay. Yeah, so we're just sitting upright. And just take a moment to really feel your body. Are you leaning forward? Are you tucking, leaning back? Just like rock around on your pelvis a little bit. Feel your two sit bones, pubic bone, tailbone. Crown of the head. The beautiful thread is just pulling it up to the sky, so face really softening. Heart lifting, and breath is slowing down. Let's gently just open the arms to the sides and just. Open your fingers really wide and turn your thumbs right back, like you're twisting your shoulders down the back body. Breathe out here and then let the inhale carry your arms up. And let the arms lift your torso, lift your ribs. And keep that lift in your ribs as you turn your hands around and slowly come down on the exhale. Keep that length in your body. And each time we come up, add a millimetre more to your torso. Hands come up and down and exhale. This time we're going to go up and hold the breath. So we're going to breathe in, reach all the way up. When you get there, no rush. And you're going to hold for three seconds. And breathe out when you're ready. Hands down. Do one more like that with an inhale, Kumbaka, your attention. When you hold, you might lift your ribs, but still just drop the chin now and hold as you close your eyes. Take the right arm down to the floor, take the left arm up and over. Go as deep as you can into a nice little side bend. We have a moon shape, we have a new moon today. Time for intention setting. Reach up. Gently lift up, open the feet out wide into a straddle. But you're up in your little props and we're gonna take a twist from here. So one foot to the floor and then your elbow or your arm just kind of comes in. And I like to use a brick when I'm up like this, imagining I'm pregnant, I would want like a brick to help me twist. But you can lean into that leg, you can like let it still stretch, squeezing one waist if it feels okay. Yeah, and some people can even sort of bind 
that come in. They might look a little, a little wider. Yeah. So turning, twisting, lengthening one side as you compress the other. Big adrenal squeeze. On your inhale, now turn the head back around and then exhale, release the arms and legs. Yeah, feet, I think feet going out to the wide as you can and even onto the blade of the foot if there's not enough room for your tummy or higher on your little pillow. And reach around, use the brick and just maybe hold the leg. You can't do full twists, right? When you're pregnant, we only trying to keep the pelvis stable and just twist from the waist up. If you can breathe into the bottom lungs and side ribs, your breath will massage the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, the adrenals. And also retonify, re strengthen, and vitalize the organs. Inhale, turn your head, exhale, release, spread. And then one forward bend, whichever works. You might just go for legs wide, walk through, come off the blanket if that's too much hyperextension, yeah, on your knees. You want to do Vatikanasana instead, you can do that. Kind of play with it. So a lot of you have done yoga. You've done yoga with me. So what does your body need right now? Maybe a little play with both. Breathing, opening. that's all feeling great complete move into a half pigeon if you want to stay there longer in the forward bend it feels really good for your back your hands <coughs> just go for it otherwise move into at a full half pigeon those hips a little bit more now. So sometimes we need to put a little brick under the bottom just to give more room for your tummy and something in front as well.
have a few conscious breaths into your hips, your glutes, even if you have to, yeah, even if you have to stay up. Mind just breathing into those sensations, letting them just sort of soften. around this release. I want you to find like your sweet spot, your final pose, because we're going to do like final pose with meditation, with a little guided meditation. And so you might do like the chest opener or the bridge. So you could do the bridge with like a brick. Great if you make the bridge, right? It's going to let everything soften. If that's too intense, put a cushion on top or a little towel or your hands. If it's too much on your lower back, sway open. It's a great one as well, just to relax all of these ligaments, make more space in the body. It's not going to turn the baby to breach if they head down, so don't worry about that. You could do the bricks, low, medium, a little chest opener. Yeah, so you go back. Open, find that spot so that brick is sort of under shoulder blades and under your nipples, really. And the arms just open. And again, the diaphragm gets this lovely space to relax and release. So both are really calming poses. So another pose that you want to take and just listen to your body and explore that. Right, and just let yourself settle. If you've got an eye pillow, put that on. Take a few breaths to arrive. Of course, you can always just lie on your side, like if it's too intense. Anything there, just rest on your side. Close your eyes for a minute. Let your awareness scan through your body. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. The moment scan through. Hold up your crown into your face and soften. Come back to that little beaming light in your third eye. And drop awareness down into your heart center. Feel the love in that space. Center for loving kindness. From the heart and drop down into the womb and we remember that the womb is our second heart it's a mirror from the longing that we had the calling that we felt in our hearts and that creative manifestation is now in the womb and connect the womb space the sacred part of the body and connect with the baby Trusting all the feelings and thoughts and notions that you have had, insights maybe into who they are already. They need to have a second or third baby and compare the personas and trust 
here and now what you feel. About who they are and why they've come. Really trust and ask some questions, listen to the answers. What do you need from me right now? Can I be your best mom? What will we teach one another? Whatever feelings, images, answers, any words that arise, anything at all, movements. Know that you're not alone. You're a gift. Hearts have chosen one another. Even at this crazy, crazy point of human existence on this beautiful round ball of three, for some reason, the baby is still choosing to come into this world. Because there's hope. Hope and love carrying all of humanity forward right now. Through our babies, through our hearts, through our wounds. No rush if you're on a brick. You might just want to lift slightly, move those bricks out of the way, be comfortable, like flat on your back, and just feel that space equal into the body. You might just rock your knees side to side, windscreen wiper. Um, when you're ready, there's no rush. Roll over to one side and press your hands and explore and just come on up. Come up, take a seat and just rest your hands wherever you like, maybe to the heart belly or in prayer, whatever feels right for you. Trusting, feeling. Acknowledging all the wisdom that exists inside our bodies. Beautiful. Here's to have a mind that can read that. It's not always looking out to the world. 
for the pain to spend the time and exist. So let's bring our hands into prayer and if you're comfortable, take one on. Seal our practice tonight, a big breath in. Head. Gratitude. Touch the fingers up to the third eye. Sort of wisdom to our lips and our heart. And then bow forwards and down to the earth, ground your palms. And just whenever you feel ready, you can lift your body back up. Rub your hands together, perhaps. And just cut the palms of your hands over your eyes. Let your head rest forwards. Take a breath here. Gently just stroke upwards and outwards. And just come back whenever you're ready. Well, we could go for longer, but you know, I've got a shindig next door. <laughs> Haven't heard that word in a while. <laughs> I'd love to hear how that experience was for you. Anyone wants to share how that was, just dropping in, connecting with your baby. Something you would do again, something that was interesting. You enjoy it. Clara, how are you going? I'm good, thank you, Nadine. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. Good. And my baby has been kicking me so much lately. It's been actually painful even. Um, and fascia is so tight, so this felt really great. Good. Yeah. Great. Beautiful. Alice, how are you? How is your practice? Um, that was great. Thank you very much. <laughs> good. Enjoyed it. Good. Katerina, are you good? How's your tummy feeling? I think that she just got a hiccup. I can feel how my bump it's like <laughs> coming up and down. <laughs> but I'm feeling great. Yeah. Good. Belly Thank you. Softer. Yeah. It's one of my most significant memories is when I meditated with Leroy in my belly and I asked him the question, what will you learn from me? And what will I learn from you? And the answer was just so clear, so like profound. It was like, boom, it was like something else was saying it, you know? So really trust your feelings and what comes. And it might not have been in that moment, it might be in another moment. You know, that you hear them speaking to you, guiding you. And just ask and trust. Mm. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> um, next week, baby positions. A bit late for you, Katerina, but we'll see, hopefully. Okay. And good luck turning your little one around. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, darlings. Lots of love, everybody. I'll see you next week. Thank Have you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs>